Today I would like to talk a little bit about Beethoven Piano Sonata Op. 7, which is one of the lesser known and less performed sonatas among the 32 that Beethoven wrote. It's nicknamed the Grand Sonata, and this nickname is quite appropriate considering that it takes almost a half an hour to perform. But it's also grand in the sense that the sonata explores such a wide range of expressions, and the four movements could not be more different. All of Beethoven's works, including these 32 piano sonatas, have been performed, analyzed, and discussed for over two centuries. So I will not be analyzing it to bits today. Instead, I will be focusing on a few ideas that I think are important in understanding and performing the piece. Today, I will talk about the first movement, particularly about how Beethoven took kernels of musical ideas and used them throughout the movement and synthesized them to bring the whole movement together organically. So let's get to it and see what we find. of working from a central idea and letting the whole piece grow out of it is a big part of Beethoven's compositional style, at least by his middle period. But I think even in these early works, we can find early stages of this technique. It is one of the reasons why Beethoven's music sounds tightly organized even when we are not aware of anything about the compositional technique. These kernels of ideas are like building blocks if we were to compare music to a great piece of architecture. They may not be apparent at first sight, but digging deeper into the music, we make discoveries with new meaning that adds on to our understanding. As you're learning the sonata and working out the obvious technical difficulties, and in this movement there are many, finding motifs or fragments of musical ideas will help you make relations between sections, which will guide you to a more informed interpretation of the piece. movement started, just in another key. Let's stop here and look at it closely. Beethoven demands a quite fast tempo, allegro molto e con brio. Um, it begins very simply, with chords in the right hand and the repeated notes in the left hand. This is the first main idea in the exposition, and you can see that after the initial statement of this motif played in the left hand under the strings of eighth notes in the right hand. And the pulsating energy of the left hand immediately sets the character. So it's all quite simple harmonically, and this is when um, the music goes to another key, the key of subdominant, and the music is trying to set a new key, the dominant key of B flat major. We are 
are now in the second main section of the exposition, in the key of B flat major. As you can hear, the theme is in very much contrast to the opening theme. It is more lyrical and almost chorale-like. But after the initial statement of the, this lyrical theme, Beethoven varies it this way. He uses repeated notes to elaborate the main melody. And if this is not directly from how Beethoven began the movement, which gave it the pulsating energy, it is definitely in the spirit of it. By doing so, Beethoven synthesizes the two main ideas. And by this point, the repeated notes take over, and it is clear that what seemed like an accompaniment figure or a way of varying a melody can be a very important idea. And with this understanding, the repeated notes have a meaning, and you can really hear them everywhere. And it would be no exaggeration to call it a motif. In the development section, there is a new tune just before the recapitulation, and even this tune is accompanied by repeated notes. The pulsating energy is turned into relentlessness, and I would even say Beethoven is almost obsessive with this idea. the same ideas apply to the recapitulation. Another pervading idea of the movement is offbeat accents. Now, scores on those or emphasis on weak beats are everywhere in all of Beethoven's music. So one might argue against it being any kind of particular importance in this movement. But to me, a part of what characterizes this movement is from these accents. As you already know, the movement begins this way with a unexpected accent on the third bar. Beethoven inserts these accents on unexpected beats and use them to the effect of playfulness. These bells in the left hand are all played in the weak beats and with a sforzando, so our sense of pulse is challenged. And even after all these written out tremolos, the syncopate rhythm and sforzandos continue and close the exposition section of the movement. And this rhythm, which closes the exposition, is used in the development section in a sequence, this time to modulate and to emphasize the key of D major, which is very far removed from the home key of E flat major. And what happens at the end of the movement is really interesting. The syncopation, the, this rhythm is used repeatedly again and again, and finally settles with an E flat major chord, and it sounds like the opening of the movement, except the left hand and right hand are not aligned. It's almost like this syncopation repeated over and over again. Beethoven is deliberately trying to confuse the ears. And after a couple of bars, Beethoven seems to be saying, 
oh, just kidding, here is the right pulse, and the movement comes to a satisfying ending. Beethoven once remarked, the working out in breadth, length, height, and depth begins in my head, and since I'm conscious of what I want, the basic idea never leaves me. It rises, grows upward, and I hear and see the picture as a whole piece takes shape, and stand forth before me as though cast in a single piece, so that all that is left is the work of writing it down. Every time I go back to a piece of music by Beethoven, I find new relationships between ideas, and the smallest detail makes a big difference in how I hear and play his music. I hope that you can hear the music with a renewed understanding too, and I'll see you next time with the second movement.